Hi, this is LT Survival. In today's video, as request following my overnight stay by minus 23, is the Canadian Force Sleep System. I'll show you uh, what's in the bag and also show you what I add to the bag to be toasty warm and comfy. So stay tuned, we'll be right back. Well, we're back. This is the pouch in which the Canadian military uh, sleep system uh, comes in. It's a Dolphil uh, sleeping bag. It's all contained in this pouch. It's not a small pouch. This is not light. This is not something you will take on a trek on the Himalaya, even though it could, um, it could very, very comfortable. The problem is, is the weight. Um, it's dull feel, it's supposed to be extra light, but it's not a small system, it's not a compact system. In there I have uh, four piece. The liner which touch our body which is basically cut it, an inner and outer sleeping bag and have a BV bag. I have also the hood which goes on our head because there's no hood included in the sleeping bag. So. Let's get it out. You'll see uh, the system mounted together and then I'll cut and we'll come back with every single piece taken out of uh, the sleeping bag itself disassembled and we'll reassemble it uh, partly to, so, to show you uh, what's the process of it. So let's do it. As you can see it's all uh, compression bending, bending Well, as you can see, this is the BV bag, basically it's a big tube in which we slide in and, uh, to, uh, and we can close it up. Uh, actually, never succeeded in closing it up. Could barely get in. It's a very tight fit. It's not open in the middle like some system. Uh, it is a an envelope basically in which you put the sleeping bag. I'm gonna cross in front, try to, to shake. The sleeping bag is all inside, so that way when I pull it out, it's still protected by the BV bag, so that way we're comfy. It's a Gore-Tex BV bag, so it protects pretty well and it breathes, so keeps the sleeping bag himself uh, breathing freely. As I'm pulling out this, this is the this is the liner. Why it's not attached in my sleeping bag? Well, one thing for sure, if you want to get in this, you don't want it to be uh, to be attached. What I do usually is get into the fleece to the uh, flannel in, in French cotton bag, which could be tied inside my sleeping bag. Then I will bundle up and slide inside. Unfortunately, this is not a lot of space, so you have to bring it down to see it. So I'm gonna pull out the sleeping bag and we're gonna be, uh, gonna be see the beast inside.
Okay, as you can see, here's the sleeping bag itself. The foot part is a rectangular uh, portion. Uh, the, uh, the strap here are probably made originally to tie it on itself to roll it up. Uh, I've never done that with the Dow type uh, sleeping bag. You just stuff it. You don't want to, uh, to roll it up um, the Dow feel. And um, there's a square. The foot is like rectangular part. Uh, I will often turn the, uh, the sleeping bag with the zippers on top. It's easier to get in. It's not easier though to zip it up. It's the part that's pretty difficult. So you've got three layers. The author here, the hidden and the liner. As I said, the liner I prefer to have it loose. Come fight it and get in and then put my feet into the sleeping bag and slide with the liner. Uh, the hood is probably not the most aesthetic. Uh, part of the sleeping bag. You see different color. Well, that's a different lot of sleeping bag. Uh, this one is 2006. This one is 89. The hood is made in uh, 88. And the fleece 2008. So a uh, fleece is probably the thing that's changed the most. But these uh, sleeping bag are pretty durable. Uh, they're, uh, they've been around for 50 years. Uh, it's the same system. There's probably a better feel for the inside um, in the industry now, but they, uh, they believe that the, uh, the Dow the feel um, is a better uh, isn't it right now. They haven't gone to uh, the ultralight and uh, tinselate type of uh, filling. So I'll show you how the hood fun function because this sleeping bag goes to your shoulder. Once you, f you uh, close it up, I'll show you. Once you close it up, you come from the inside, and then you have to wiggle the 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 Gore-Tex bag up this part because it has no zipper. So you have to pass it on. You sit, and then you fight to get it up to your shoulder. Uh, once it's the 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 Gore-Tex is all over, then you uh, you come from the inside, and you grab the uh, the pull string on your zipper. And you try to zip it up. So you go and you zip yourself in from the outside to the inside. Okay? Once you zip all of them, and it's not an easy task, so it's not a five second zip. You're not going to slip in there. Um, as you see here, I have a little tie off. I'm going to have to zoom the camera in to show you. I'll, I'll make some zoom uh, and I cut them in the, uh, to tie the sleeping bag. Since my fleece is not tied in, uh, there's a lanyard that's not present on top to, to tie the, uh, the top. I might try it again with the, 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 the fleece zipped in, uh, tied in. Might be easier. I just have uh, difficulty with my size to, uh, to get easily around in the sleeping bag. So once you're zipped in your head is sticking out with the hood in here and you look like a mommy. A uh, mummy. A mummy not a mommy. Okay. Here's the hood. It opens up like this and you have two elastic bands. Well, the two elastic bands goes over your sh in your sh your arm. You pull the hood on, put the bands underneath. Okay, and once you're ready to uh, to go to sleep, it covers part of your face, and you velcro here, and you velcro there, and only the mouth and nose are outside, so you can breathe the air out, the humidity out. Uh, without freezing your face and everything, so you're pretty uh, comfy. Doesn't look great, but it's very efficient. So, so that's the hood. Glasses, so I can see what I'm doing. And this is the sleeping bag itself. You can see as I move it around, it goes up 
with uh, air. So the air is the thing that, uh, that isolates you. So we're going to cut in um, before I put the BV bag on. And uh, before I do, I'm going to do close-up shots of the sleeping bag itself and the hood so I can cut them in uh, to the video as required and we'll uh, show you. There's one more thing that we need to sleep in the outside. We do have the bag that carries the mattress and it's also supposed to be the inflator. You see here the, no uh, the knob here. Yep. You connect that to I have another pad here. Connect that to the valve and you can pump it. That way you don't pump humidity into your mattress which would cause it to uh, deflate. This is a self-inflating mat, uh, a bit like the Thermarest, but it doesn't have the, uh, the valve of the Thermarest. So the valve has been made a little, I think a little cheap, but these mattresses are pretty much abused so it finished by not sealing either way and you end up with only a thin layer of, uh, uh, of insulation, okay? So, if it's, well, if we read the instruction on it, you use the bag to inflate it if it's below th zero degree or 32 Fahrenheit. Um, if not, you can blow in it with your mouth if it's higher than zero. Um, it takes about 10-15 minutes to inflate correctly. If you let it on the, in itself, it'll inflate so much, and then you blow into it to uh, to maximize the uh, the thickness. But uh, it's, it's not the best one on the market. There's better on the market. Uh, this one has been made specifically for the forces. Again, con contract like that sometimes uh, you don't get as high a quality as you could. It's all a question of prices. So this would be uh, inflated. Uh, sometimes we will put it into the BV bag if we're going on the ground basically and not having a, uh, a ground sheet underneath. We'll, we'll put it in the BV bag so it stays into the BV bags with us to isolate us so if we move uh, it does, we don't slide off the mat and uh, we will uh, we will have the uh, sleeping bag into the uh, BV bag. So, bottom line, this is the system. But they're strict if you don't want to be uh, too cold. And I have difficulty uh, sometimes zipping the sleeping bag onto me. Um, it might just be me. I might be too big. But the inner bag is kind of difficult to to zip, and to get a better com to, be to get more comfortable in the BV bag since we don't have that much time, uh, we often go late to sleep and then wake up early. So it's difficult to uh, to take the time to to get ourselves together. Uh, once you fight for 10, 15 minutes to get into this thing, uh, you want to sleep. I'm not sure why. But uh, I'll use a, uh, I'll use a trick, basically, the comfy blanket, yes. Well, this is the poncho liner or the uh, ranger blanket, as it's known in the U.S., depending on which side of the armies you're coming from. Uh, the ranger blanket is a uh, synthetic type tinsulate, probably, uh, material. And it's very light, very warm when it's needed and not too warm when it's needed. So it's kind of a, the go-to blanket I'll use. If, if it's very warm outside, I'll just wrap myself into that instead of pulling out the whole, the whole nine yards, which is kind of complicated. So I'll go lighter with this. And often, um, with the cadets, we often do uh, field trip uh, with overnights, uh, either in uh, October, which is not too cold, so you can get away with one of the layer and then use only the liner and the outer uh, as a sleeping bag. 
and in the winter we have to use both uh, below zero you have got to be using both but this blanket will give you about another uh, five or six degree warmth and if you're inside the bivy bag it'll get to get again about 10 percent more warmth uh, to your sleeping bag so the system itself with this blanket uh, gets you pretty warm and no problem sleeping outside. It is made for the Arctic, so that's why it's so voluminous, so big. And it's a dull field, the uh, Canadian Force is still not believing into the synthetic material for the Arctic, uh, and they don't want to have three types of sleeping bag, uh, summer, winter, and, uh, and uh, Arctic type, so they prefer layering the system with two identical bags basically the inner and outer are just slightly bigger one from the other and that's how it works so it's been going on for about like 50 years uh, it's been the same type of sleeping bag uh, improvement probably has been done not sure which one but uh, uh, they're uh, researching new ways of doing things with the old material but we're, we're pretty conservative as for uh, keeping the whole thing. Well, uh, I'll do some close-up that I'll insert into the, uh, the video at this point. We'll come back and I'll show you um, how to put it back into the pouch. Talking about the pouch, which is here, one of the tricks we're using when we're in the field uh, you know your jacket you don't have anywhere to put it uh, your pants neither uh, you don't want to leave them on the ground since they'll get wet so what we do is often we try to have our clothing as, as dry as possible uh, not always possible but at least we keep them together so we'll put the jacket the wind pants in there uh, we'll have uh, the, uh, the clothing layer in between the two sleeping bags so basically if we have a, uh, a fleece pants over our um, uh, long johns uh, we'll put the fleece pants into in between two layers of our sleeping bag so it's warm change the socks in a bag often we'll do that and uh, we'll change in there which is tricky if you're big like me I mean might as well change outside but it's cold and uh, you uh, you have all the thing that touch your skin that will be warmer uh, if you uh, keep your long john in there they have to be polypropylene or synthetic that wicks away the moisture because if you're wet you'll be if you're wearing cotton you'll be <laughs> you'll be in a pain because you'll be cold so might as well strip to the minimum and uh, we'll keep some liner socks which are the same thing polypropylene and the wick away later on I'll do a video on the other stuff that we've got uh, to keep us warm in the field and to keep our feet dry and uh, we'll sleep into that when I did the uh, overnight sleep I kept the fleece pants with the uh, with the uh, underwear because it was well I was too lazy to take them out in there second I wasn't comfortable of doing it in that uh, environment third we're all synthetic so got away with it no moisture that accumulated in the in, in the clothing so it wicked away and that way I wasn't cold at all so uh, you can go away and, and you can get away with some uh, clothing inside your sleeping bag but usually we go down to the uh, body layer in the sleeping bag with the minimal socks on and in the morning we'll change we'll change the socks uh, we'll change uh, the johns uh, if we have if we have enough sometimes you have to go with what you've got so in the field you do the strict minimum and if you don't have time you change at least your socks and that's all and you go on so this is a good system it's just heavy it's just a big big pouch so I'll put the uh, so I'm gonna cut away for some clothes up when we return I'll put the uh, BB bag back on you'll see it's 
It's basically a bag. I'll show you a BB bag. And in the end, we'll pack that back up into the pouch, which kind of uh, complicated because there's lots of air into this system. So let me do the close up and then we'll be right back. back the uh, the BB bag basically it's a one opening bag of Gore-Tex so to put back to put your sleeping bag in and you usually do it before time because it's a pain in the butt to do that in the field We basically shove, shove the, uh, the bag into the pouch, so it's not an easy process. As you can see, the opening is here, and we're getting all that bag available. So, I mean, you've got to be sitting into the sleeping bag to be able to pass the sleeping bag on. And it's a pain in the butt, I can tell you. Because as you see, it's not that wide compared to the sleeping bag. Okay, this is the head, and you would have your hood sticking out. With the lanyard for tying it up, if you could, if you ever could. Then inside you've got the sleeping bags. And it goes to the feet. There.
So it's basically made for about 5'11", 5'10". Man, so we do have six some that don't even fit in there. So they have special bags for heavier weight uh, people. So to put it back in, well, just before I put it back into the uh, this big sleeping bag in this small pouch, okay, as I show you in the close up, there's a string that we have to listen. One trick, if you have time, is always to uh, take off some air from the uh, by rolling it. So basically, I loosely roll it so I can push some air out of the sleeping bag and the pouch. Mainly the uh, the Gore-Tex pouch because with the pain in the butt, try to fit all of it with the air in it. So you just roll it up, and then you start pushing it. So I'm going to shut up and uh, do it. This bag has no ground sheet into it, so it's a little wider and easier. All you have to do is to shovel it up. I'm going to keep this part to push the uh, sleepy bag inside so that we can wrap it at the end. Now there's a trick. It seems it's not gonna fit, huh? And it's gonna fit, but I've got to sit on the pouch. I'll show you how. Okay, okay, yeah. I'm gonna simply uh, just push on it, but uh, usually we put it on the ground and we uh, sit on it. Now we are almost done. We still have this out, but that's not a bad thing. We've compressed the side. Let's zoom in. Okay. Now that we've compressed it, it's tying up that we have to do. There's a, uh, there's a plastic clip and I like to come back and make a uh, an escape knot on the cord so it keeps it nice 
no fuzz, no weaving around. Now we've got all this. Yeah. We have to deal with this part which is not inside, that's why I closed up uh, the ties here, but I have to let the air out if I want to compress it. I can still compress the, the bag and push it back in, so that's what I'm going to do. Okay. Voila! As you can see, tied off this string and that one. That one. Uh, that one in particular passed through both the D rings here, tied up, and did an SKP knot, which I'll explain basically it's two, two small knots, two small uh, loops like this, pass one in the other, and one is holding the other. And I have a loose end here, which I, if I pull, the knot's going to come undone. So it's an easy knot. Keeps the string away, keeps things closed, and it supplements the plastic buckles that sometimes will, will slip. So, let's so you end up with this, a big chunk of sleeping bag. As you can see, I had to fight pretty much the, uh, my blanket just went slipped around but uh, that gives us the Canadian sleep system well this is it I hope it did answer a couple of questions of what I used to sleep at minus 23 um, I had the BV bag the cadet didn't they did not uh, I was issued the BV bag but the cadets would never never receive BV bag for them so they but I mean they go for one night and it's not a problem. The, if the bag is wet, we change it the next day and uh, we give them another one. So uh, we, uh, we, thought we have some, enough supply that we can go around like this. So there's not a problem for the cadets to uh, wet the bag a bit. Uh, the, uh, in the snow often we'll have bags that are starting to get uh, wet or humid. And it's not much a deal. It's not much uh, a problem for them to uh, to continue for the next day. But if you're going for a week, I mean, <laughs> you want your bag to stay dry. That's why they pulled out the baby bag with the limitation I explained later earlier. Hope you like this video. Hope it answered your question. If you like it, please click the like button, the thumbs up, click the share and subscribe to the channel. Have your friend come over and subscribe to the channel. Don't forget I have a, uh, um, uh, a uh, Amazon e-store uh, to help me gather more uh, equipment. Uh, I've bought it out of my own pocket all the time but uh, if I receive any help at all that would be uh, great. Uh, I'm doing that on a very tight but I prefer to give you informative uh, thing and go and buy the, the next uh, fancy thing and, uh, and tell you that you should get it. I mean, I have good stuff. I'll be reviewing more stuff because I've bought more uh, that are coming. Uh, I've tried another source than Canadian. 
we'll see what that does we'll see how much quality I received and that will be an option it takes time but it's going to be an option at one point I'm going to continue trialing the stuff uh, I'm not yet on the microphone on the camera I haven't changed the camera yet just want to update you on that but I'll be uh, doing that shortly the camera is still under warranty so we'll see what they say about the jack being non-serviceable I'm still on the standard camera mics that's why it's going to be a couple of indoors video weather outside is not good uh, we received some snow, nothing like my friend at FS Buscraft, which has been snowed in, and other on the East Coast been snowed in pretty bad. I think they receive all our snow, usual snow. And I wish them luck for the rest of the winter, which is starting to get pretty long. So, again, you like the video? Thumbs up. And share and subscribe, the whole good thing. We're on Facebook. Come see us, we're on Google Plus, of course. And if you have any comment down below, no problem. I'll always try to answer your comment, answer your question. And these can be found also in surplus material. Uh, go around, they're pretty good. They're not so light, but they're less expensive often in a surplus than uh, the high quality uh, bag. I have one bag. I have one personal bag that it's insulate, a, a, a mummy type uh, bag, which I've did a sleep, sleep out like the one I did at minus 23 um, with it. It's a single layer and I felt cold at one point. But on the next video, I'll show you the difference in between the two. So stay tuned. We'll see you in the next video.